Hello, thanks for tuning in. I wanted to introduce a new painting project that I have for you here. Um, it's uh, going to be uh, the Bandai 172nd uh, A-Wing Starfighter from the uh, Star Wars universe. And um, I've had a few questions over the last uh, uh, few videos that I've put out uh, about how I paint and, and uh, personal questions um, that uh, uh, have come through. And I thought, well, what a great way to... to uh, highlight how I do things and maybe pass on some of the skills and some of the, you know, techniques that I've learned uh, in my time of as being a modeler and uh, pass them on to you guys and see if uh, that works for you. And, um, you know, maybe it'll uh, change the way you paint or, or um, you know, give you some ideas uh, to uh, utilize yourself. So, um, thought, excellent subject matter. This is uh, you know, basically just going to be three colors pretty much. And, um, I thought uh, this is uh, an excellent kit uh, to do that. And we can paint in sub-assemblies. The way these Bandai kits go together, they uh, are pretty much a snap fit and they can uh, be very easily painted and then assembled after. And uh, so we'll go over that uh, now. Okay, so how are we going to paint this and, wh and what color are we going to do? Well, it's obviously a white or an off-white. It's a warm white color by the instruction manual and uh, from what I've seen online. Uh, so I think um, I've looked over my paint collection. I'm going to go with a mixture of Tamiya XF2 flat white and X2 uh, gloss white. So I'm going to do probably maybe 70% flat and then 30% uh, gloss. And the reason is, is because, uh, and you might ask, well, they're both white, what difference does it make? Well, uh, I don't like to have uh, completely flat paint, especially with Tamiya. I find that um, it's easy to leave fingerprints because uh, of the natural oils in your fingers. And um, I find that if you add a bit of gloss to it, it has a, a layer of the emulsion protects the, uh, the paint somewhat and also it's a little bit more durable for reassembly because these kits are, are uh, more of a snap fit assembly uh, than your traditional model kit. And also too it provides a, a, a nice uh, semi-gloss or even satin uh, barrier for uh, the weathering process which I think is really important when it comes to ships from uh, the Star Wars universe because uh, if you ever Obviously, uh, if you've seen pictures of X-Wings or, or the Millennium Falcon, uh, very, very weathered. And um, so it's um, almost a, a modeling imperative that you have to weather these. Um, so anyways, we're going to go with that. Now, we're gonna, it's, a, it's an off-white. It's a warm white. So we're going to add a bit of XF57 buff, just a few drops. Not going to be a lot. We just want to make it a bit of warmth, a hint of warmth. And um, that should... Uh, the buff should uh, effectively do that. So we'll keep that for the white color. And for the red, um, I did look online and there were some sources that uh, that said that uh, uh, hull red XF9 and X7 gloss red mixed at a one to one ratio or 50-50 ratio um, really recreates the um, the red scene in, on A-Wings Quite effectively so we're gonna go with that and um, what else we got we'll the cockpit is a black color so I'm gonna paint it XF 69 uh, NATO black it's not uh, it's it's more of a, a gray greeny black and I think uh, it's uh, for scale effect it looks much better than um, if I were to use straight flat black or semi-gloss or whatever. So this is uh, what I'm going to use. I'm going to highlight with some dry brushing um, and we'll cover that obviously as the uh, video progresses. Okay, so uh, now getting back to the red. Uh, red is a hard color to paint. Now it's easy to put it and thin it and throw it through the airbrush and, and, it, and it covers fine, but it's important to prime prime the uh, these, this, these red parts uh, with a light colored primer. And because um, if you've ever tried to spray red over dark plastic, you never have the same uh, vibrant uh, color that you're expecting uh, as it uh, comes out of the nozzle of the airbrush. So I uh, suggest that you use uh, a primer. And to highlight those, uh, show you a few that, um, that I use. 
Uh, I might, I often use just um, like a light gray Tamiya paint or white, depending on, on how vibrant you want the color to be. If you want a real strong, let's say fire engine red, you want to use white because the white undercoat of the primer will really bring out that red. But uh, since it's such a deep red, you can go with a sort of a light gray. So if, even if you wanted to use this, I use this often as a primer and um, it's, uh, it's pretty good and it's water soluble so it cleans up easily. Um, Tamiya also makes, uh, as a spray, uh, the fine surface primer. Now it comes in light gray and white. This is great product. This stuff um, is extremely fine. It covers excellent. It's a lacquer base, so it, uh, it has a bite into the plastic that will uh, be very strong and very durable. So these come highly recommended, and I often uh, use um, uh, the uh, fine surface primer by Tamiya. And I have both white and the red. Um, other primers are uh, Mr. Surfacer. Um, the higher the number, the more fine the pigment is or the, the paint. And um, these are very good. Now these are lacquer based. And uh, uh, if you are spraying them in the house, uh, you, you want to have a spray booth because uh, you don't want to be, you know, stunting your growth as, uh, as you, you use these products. Uh, 500, uh, very thick. Um, I often use this for if I'm uh, using, um, how would you, how do you describe it? Um, on armor models, uh, if you have like a rough surface, a cast surface, this you can really stipple with, uh, you put it on, you let it dry, and then you can stipple it with uh, an old uh, paintbrush. But uh, for something like this aircraft, you want to go with a high number, you want to go 1200, or I believe Mr. Hobby also has 1500. Uh, though I don't use this as often. Um, another one is um, this product by uh, by Gaia or Gaia. Uh, it's a Surfacer EVO and um, not very common in um, in North America. I had uh, a Japanese exchange student who um, uh, built lots of Gundam models, and he brought his entire collection of paint over. And when he left, he he said he wanted me to have them. So I got. Uh, at least 200 bottles of little paint is excellent. Uh, so I have used the white and it's quite good, it's very fine. Um, but again, it's a uh, lacquer based and um, it can be quite toxic, but it's a very good product. So uh, when I do thin, um, I use a few things. I like uh, Mr. Color Thinner and these will work for pretty much almost every single paint you can imagine, even the Vallejo uh, Air uh, range. Um, I've had good results with this stuff. Uh, I use this primarily for all the um, painting I do do, and uh, it's a great product. Uh, I also use um, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. Now, uh, if you're spraying a straight lacquer as opposed to an acrylic based, um, I find that the paint can dry very quickly, especially with the uh, ratios that I mixed, uh, mixed thinner to paint. And um, I find that uh, if I'm using Mr. Color lacquer based paints uh, and the Mr. Surfacer uh, range, that the leveling thinner works great because it extends the working time of the paint and um, it doesn't clog the airbrush and it allows the, uh, the coverage to be very fine and very, very thin and uh, all around. Uh, it's sort of essential for my process of painting that is. So these are some of the products you can pick up if you feel that you need them. And um, yes, okay, so finally, well, it, when I paint, I like to have, uh, uh, to put them on, on, on skewers. Basically, it's a, an alligator clip on a skewer. Uh, you can buy the Mr. Hobby kind here. Um, I pick these up. I think you get like, I don't know, 40 or 50 for you know, 20 bucks or something like that. And um, they have both sides. You can like clip it on to whatever you're doing and then you can have this holding the part. Um, I have a makeshift um, holder with hole drilled into a block of wood. And uh, so I just uh, made these out of skewers. These are really cheap. Pick these up at Home Depot. Like you get a, a bag of them or something for really cheap. And uh, essentially what I do is uh, I just... Uh, Clip them to the back, boom, 
you can spray whatever you got to do. You don't touch the surface. You put it into its holder and just let it dry. So it's as easy as that. So I'll put all of this stuff um, where I can on um, on these paint uh, sticks. And um, yeah, I'll see you at the spray booth. Thanks. Okay, so here we are uh, at the spray booth. Now I'm going to um, just use the uh, the Tamiya uh, light uh, gray as a primer for the red. And um, it does. Ha I do have uh, the Tamiya lacquer thinner, but uh, really there's no difference between uh, this and the Mr. Color product. Uh, and in fact, I've used this uh, Tamiya stuff already and um, just poured the excess into of the uh, Mr. Color into this container because it's easier to uh, uh, pour into the mixing jars and stuff like that. So uh, mixing jars. So this is an old Tamiya or Mr. Color paint bottle and uh, don't throw these away if you're done. Uh, I clean them out and they're great mixing cups. So this is uh, my process. I never uh, vigorously shake the paint. I always use a, um, this is like a piece of sprue, just cut down a little mixing stick and I always stir it. Um, a lot of people shake the paint, but I find it has a lot of bubbles and stuff and it just doesn't, um, well, you know, maybe it's a bit too nitpicky of me, but um, I always find if I stir it, there's less bubbles and less uh, um, potential issues when airbrushing. So, nice and mixed, clockwise, counterclockwise, and then, yeah, so it should be good here, and I just... Pour some in there and grab my paper towel and uh, so you don't have constant problems I always wash or remove the excess off the, the thread of the paint bottle so that uh, you never have any issues opening them up so how much thinner do I use as you can see, um, I'll probably have about uh, one and a half milliliters of, of paint. Now I'll add, depending, now this is a primer, so I will add just a little bit at first. Not much, because you want it to flow through the air for, airbrush nicely and you don't want it to spit and uh, be half dried as it's going through. Let's try a little bit more. That might be too much. All right, let's see what that's like. Good mix. And I always do a paint test on the edge of the bottle. Yeah. So it, it's sort of hard to describe. You're going to have to just practice and practice. Um, but I usually like to get it where it holds its color and then as it's going down, it becomes more translucent. If that is any sort of explanation, and I know it's it's difficult. It's more of a trial and error. You just sort of figure out as you go along. But I would say that there's probably 60% thinner and 40% um, paint in this particular one. Uh, for some techniques, I'll go with way more thinner, but uh, because of primer, we do want it to cover. Um, we'll go with the 60-40. So I'm going to turn on the compressor and the, uh, the spray booth. So I'll have to go um, without voice after that because uh, the sounds of both of those things uh, just drown out anything I'll have to say. So from now on you just see how it goes as I paint. Thanks.